This video is sponsored by JNC Collectibles website at jnccollectibles.com. Be sure to check them out for all your TCG needs from sealed products to sleeves to playmats. Link is in the description box below. Thank you and back to the video. Hello everyone, welcome to the Team JNC Collectibles channel. I am Shim Ping Shu. Uh, today bring you another deck profile from a regional finish. So this past weekend was Philadelphia Regional. We had about 510 players for nine rounds. I ended with A1, finished second place after, uh, after Swiss. So uh, before I start the deck profile, some shout outs. Shout out to uh, Dueling Guard and Dragon Inc, sponsor of the team. And shout out to obviously that's the, the actual team, uh, Team JNC. Pretty, pretty good support, pretty fantastic teammates. Uh, shout out to my uh, Chinese Discord for where I majority like testing and then play testing, figuring out theories and so on so far. So that being said, let's uh, start with the deck profile. So I played Pure Snake Eyes, but kind of a little bit different. Uh, to me, it's my standard version of Pure Snake Eyes, but it's different than a lot of people, a lot of other people's. So standard Snake Eye ratios: uh, three Flimber, three Ash, Oak. Well, I guess this one's not popular and then two uh, poplar these are very self-explanatory standard ratios nothing special and um i do play birch which a lot of people don't uh birch in my version with specifically parallel exceeds is required because i do go through another level one extender being uh the banshee in this combo that require um, Snake Eye Birch as an extender to search in the combo. Um, if you're not familiar with the line of doing, check out my channel, uh, Shim YG Lab. I'll have the link in the description as well. I did post there like a month ago about just combos I've been using involving Parallel Exceed. I like it a lot. I like it more than the standard, quote unquote, standard pure Jet Synchrons. Uh, I'm not a fan of the Synchros. I'm also naturally not good at Synchro Summoning. And I think Link Summoning, just having extra bodies with this helps more um, than Jet. This is also like a very fantastic extender after, for example, my normal summon gets uh, negated by like Imperm. Since all my level one, all my all my starters are level ones, I just turn them into Link Rebel, trigger this, and I'm able to combo after. And because I have extra extenders or normal starters at the point like Parallel Exceed, I'm going to play 2D about. I don't particularly like Diabelle as a card. Um, to be honest, there are so many copies of Diabelle running 3 1 to 3 Diabelle almost feel redundant to me. And there, are, I've lost multiple games where I do draw a lot of combo starter or extender, but they just all different copies of Diabelle and it was losing me the game because I, can, I at the end, only have one way to start. So at the end, I was like, just to reduce the redundancy, also there are other form of starter and extender existing too is enough uh, to maintain the deck at 40. So that these are kind of called the engine card. The other monsters just really hand trap, three nib, two draw, two ash, uh, then then they get two mourner, three vader, three imperm. Oh, as opposed to imperm gear. So imperm and vader are the best hand traps. Negates and in general are the best at the moment. Uh, Nib is getting weird recently because Nib, all the combos being involving so much to the point they are really Nib proof. So drawing Nib alone do get weird. I do see a lot of people even talking about cutting Nib or lowering the number of Nibs. I understand it, but I think this is a deck where, and actually here's already 15, right? I'm citing even more. You are aiming for multiple hand traps in your you're expecting multiple hand traps in your opening hand where nib is so good when it's get when it's in pairs with others so despite nib being a hard once per turn not that useful by itself just but because this is so broken when it paired to other thing and also because this is so broken going first i still end up maxing on nib the other three astro mourner uh, I guess draw is the special one because I see a lot of people cutting it or completely cutting it or lower it to one copy as a, as a causal target. I disagree. Like I said earlier, this is really like the going second strategy in this deck is specifically draw pairs or 
uh, combinations of hand trap to the point I need enough copies of it in my deck to make it happen. If I just completely not playing draw, I don't even know how to fit my deck with, like, I, do, I don't even know how to fill 15 hand tracks, which I have to play like the third copy of these, which I don't think they're good, which I will mention why I think these are not like three offs. Um, so at the end, I think having different variety is better. Um, when I'm aiming for pairs of hand traps or combinations of hand traps, the worst thing I want to see is the duplicate copies of home ones per turn. These are fantastic being not once per turn. So obviously I might sell these. This is just so powerful that I'd rather see this, even taking the risk of being pairs. These three, the draw is technically not once per turn, but it is kind of once per turn. These three now are hard once per turn. Drawing a pair of any of them is kind of detrimental. Um, I have a theory while I play Yu-Gi-Oh for years that if I play three copies of it, I see, if I, if I play three off and I see two copies of it, it's about to happen. It's likely to happen almost. But if I play two copies of it, I see both of them, it's just unlucky. So just to reduce the variance, I'd rather play two copies of hard ones for turns. Mourner, Ash, Troll. These three are also just weird hand traps. They also have their, they all have their weaknesses. This doesn't hit Slink at Ash on Normal Summon. This is a fire that turned on their heater line, so at the end it's not as impactful. This is just like a lot of pure or some specific hand, just kind of almost, almost immune to this. So at the end, these are not the fantastic hand trap in almost any situation. I ended up just play 2 to 2. I think that's the better ratio. This is still 15. At the end, it's more about quantity, the total quantity, instead of what specific ones. So yeah, these are kind of the non, almost the non-engine piece, then the spells, standard bonfire, wanted, uh, original, and then um, uh, temple. And I do mean the cross-ups. Uh, there are so many hand traps in the format. Going first is kind of still vulnerable. This is also okay in the mirror match. I've crossed out Flimber going second quite often because the missing link material that I will be not, I will have not access to by Flimber, I can just using Parallel Exceed instead um, if I roll draw it. So crossing out Flimber actually worked today once in against like a mirror match where I hand I, I hand trap my opponent so their board is relatively weak and I just cross out the Flimber and it was um, using Parallel to fill the missing link bodies and then perform the OTK. And the rest is just standard. Uh, 40 cards, I think. That's the ideal. I used to go over 40. I, I tried to go over 40 with the deck, but recently turned out there's just no more good hand trap to play. So in order to keep at 15 and max out the, the, rage, the, the chance of seeing them, I think just lower the deck amount. That will be the better way. So yeah, that's the main deck. Extra deck is also relatively standard. So it's incredible. Two copies of SP. IP, both Charmers, Princess, uh, this one's special, uh, Apple, and uh, Zalantis Raging, Nightmare Phoenix. Yeah, these 11 are the absolute standard, I will say. I guess the second copy of SP isn't, because second copy of SP is almost specifically to pair with um, uh, Banshee. So you can see these two copies as like, the parallel package, what the extra deck required for the parallel package. These are what I cut the, I guess the Barons, the Formula, the Savage from the Synchro build to fit these instead with the parallel. And recently I added Axis back by cutting Selene. Uh, it sounds weird, but it worked. Having Axis in available in the extra deck turn a possible line which is IP into Axis in some matchup. Um, I think that IP Axis is nearly impossible for Runic Stun to even touch it. So um, that ended being the thing, um, like the, the last minute change I, th I threw there. And the last two cards I've recently been adding to my extra deck is Sunlight Hiso. 
I know a lot of people were playing this at the beginning of the format and then a lot of people cut it during the progression of this whole format. Um, recently, because there was a decline of draw lock in the mid deck. So with me not gonna be drawed as often and also do have cross out in case draw happens, um, the odds of me under draw turn one is a lot lower. And because of that, I can go back to the Hiso line. Hiso, if it draws one hand trap out of the two draw, I'm nearly guaranteed to win. So, and also because I do go into Hiso a lot right now, uh, I barely wanted to use Selene turn one into Apple. I kind of just, while I was playing Selene instead of Axis, I just barely ever summoned it. Like the purpose of Selene at the end is almost just to turn on the arrow for maybe like Zalantis or Phoenix. And Selene can't even go into Raging Phoenix for this line because this required Fire Monster to do, which almost limited to Princess. So at the end, Selene was just not as useful. The deck, especially when I was Parallel Exceed, has so many Link materials that not having Selene to climb is perfectly fine. There's usually enough to just make Axis look like an extra monster. So at the end, yeah, this is the extra deck I've been playing, and this is. Honestly, I like it a lot. And I think with the decline of draw, Hiso is definitely like, make it more reasonable to be played. And uh, I'm having fun with it. So that's the extra deck. Side deck, uh, time card, yeah. Uh, two more hand trap, bell. I don't think there's any better hand trap, despite this one is also almost kind of bad at this point. The reason to play is like it is additional hand trap and it covers voice. It doubled down on voiceless decently well. So at the end, it's still worth the spell playing it. I think the best cards I played in my side deck were two copies of Fernier, two copies of Pancratops, two copies of Lightning Storm, and I guess the third copy of Lightning Storm. Um, a lot of people. Fernier has a rising usage recently in the past like two, three weeks. There's even like a cash version of the deck um, to abuse kind of Fernier. I think Fernier is obviously good, but not as good going second, especially when the purpose of me playing these cards or I'm not siding for decks, I'm siding for outs to some limit. And Fernier specifically at dealing some limit is technically worse than um, Tanker Tops. Because imagine you are facing like, um, imagine they have like a negate, like an imperm with some limit, Furnish never having it. But Pank just goes around it. And uh, they kind of don't really conflict because your opponent usually will have two or more monsters. And since anti-spell has been nearly gone in the format, I think Lightning Storm is just a better back removal, even than Cosmic. Uh, Cosmic sometimes could just feel not enough um, often, I want to kill the potential cross outs and perms next to the summer limit if I can. So, I ended up just playing this. This is honestly a last minute change. I took out, like, there used to be dogwood. I took it, I took that out to fit in another since there's also a lot of stones recently. So, at the end, yeah, uh, I don't want to play three furniture because I think furniture is only better going first and going second. There's technically four copies of Fernier here, so it's enough. Then back of removal, I want to play more copy Lightning Storm, but that's limited out too. And the other ones kind of just suck, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And then a copy of Triple Attack for going first, and honestly, almost a, a, just a cross on target. And because, like I mentioned, I have such a huge PTSD from Summer Limit, when I'm going first, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna abuse it as well. So there's the first summer limit. The last side deck slot. Uh, I made a bet with my friend. <laughs> and see, since I'm already keeping cross out in the in the voiceless matchup to cross out the summer limit for my opponent, I made a I made a bet with my friend saying, yeah, what if we just play another copy of cross out? Um and this one hurts them. They have no way to deal with it. Uh, I can be think. I can do things like lightning stone kill back or try to hit the summon limit, 
he goes in the gay eye, just chink cross out, cross out this, and uh, yeah, in theory, it should be very good, right? Realistically, I didn't play a single Voices this weekend. Now, actually, it hasn't been playing against Voices for a while. So, I mean, this was, was a last minute. It was really the 14, I have 14 card in, in the side deck, and I don't think anything will be even better. So I just tossed this for the meme. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get to use it today. But I don't even know what this will be. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the side deck. Um... I think there's some minor details that I could change, but I don't know what at the moment while recording. So overall, that's pretty much it. I do like my version of the list quite well. It definitely has been performing very well for me as well. And uh, But still, I think this format is a bit too long. We should, we hopefully should get a battle list, hopefully before Raleigh. Uh, but that being said, uh, uh, what points I'm still grinding. I'm probably gonna post another profile or the progression series on my channel, just like I've done it during uh, the past couple months. I mean, I took a break during March, so it's time to continue the series. Uh, that being said, hope you like to watch this uh, tech profile, and I'll see you in the next one.